Hi there, the Kaizen Sensei here. Gonna give you another lesson. Um, this is something that I do a lot. Matter of fact, one uh, one of the major functions that I do for a lot of companies is that I write SOPs for them. I've written SOPs. I'd, I'd say the first one that I wrote was about 1979, and it was kind of weird because I was asked to provide this document just to satisfy a certain requirement by the customer, okay? It, it was a customer-driven request. It was not a company request. Whereas right now, companies write SOPs for the uh, basic functions of ensuring quality of their products and services. So an SOP is a document, okay? It can be controlled or not controlled. Controlled meanings in the ISO uh, arena uh, has that you have to follow certain steps uh, for starting it, for uh, writing it, and approving it so that it could be a, a, a document that the company thoroughly sponsors, okay? Non-controlled document is basically a piece of paper that people just write on and use it whenever they need to, okay? So there's, they've got that whole spectrum. So again, what is an SOP? It's a document. And basically what it does is it provides steps that ensures the quality of a product or service, okay? Now let's get back into what quality is. Quality is driven by value. Value is any product or service that a customer is willing to pay for, providing that it meets the demands or satisfies the demands of a customer's want, needs, and desires, okay? Providing that the product and service is delivered perfectly, Okay, perfectly, which means ensures a quality, on time, hassle, and defects free. So, what does a what does an SOP um, uh, consist of? Well, I like to use this recipe analogy. As you know, if you baked cakes or barbecued uh, barbecued ribs, or even made a pot of rice, you follow certain steps. And in a recipe, which is used all the time, has basic, basic sections. In this case, it has the ingredients. We're in a manufacturing um, a shop that would represent their raw materials. It would talk about the types of tools and equipment like oven, knives, spoons, you know, like they have the measuring spoons, okay? And in case in, say, manufacturing, it would be your lathe or your, your cutting tools and wrenches. And then finally, it would, it would put the parts of steps of following step one, step two, step three, step four. Now, in a uh, recipe situation, it's pretty clear that you really need to follow it in sequential order. Uh, in the uh, lean manufacturing field, we use what we call standardized uh, work um, uh, tickets sometimes are represented as batch records or travel tickets or sometimes just a basic checklist um, However, it is it's usually pretty consistent in, in each of the different companies that that uses them in this case steps are very important Okay, because why because it, what it does It reduces variations and reduces variables and these are the two uh, culprits that results to uh, unpredictable outcomes. So if you follow the steps, even though that the outcome might not be as good as you want, at least you can probably reverse engineer and find out what you did wrong. However, if you add a, if you varied the steps or you added or subtracted a variable, then it kind of makes it difficult for you to kind of determine where the problem is or problem was. So the end of the story is that once you've completed your task, the outcome is pretty much guaranteed. Your quality standards are met. The intended use is met. The product and service, uh, uh, or actually the product is supposed, I'm sorry, the product when received is, is able to pour, perform as it's supposed to do and it is not defective. Now, one of the things that's very important about SOPs is that who reads it, okay? Who reads the SOPs? If I was a scientist or 
doctor or somebody in a very technical field, you can write volumes and volumes of these things and just basically handwrite. I mean, I'm sorry, you can use a lot of words. Okay. However, in, uh, for a machinist or a field operator, um, sometimes words don't satisfy the need of informing that person on how to do the job. Less is more. Sometimes you might use a combination of words or pictures, flowcharts, drawings. Um, the, the SOPs that I'm, I'm fam, uh, famous for is that I, um, they, I use what they call cartoon book as, um, as processes, or I use pictures that follow step by step by step with maybe a few words underneath it to give it some sort of support to what it's supposed to do. And the person who reads it once they go to it, they can actually go right straight into it and they say, aha, that's what I messed up or this is what I was supposed to do. Okay, You see, it's a very important document and it actually is um, sometimes a lifesaver. So my recommendation is that when you do design your SOP is to work directly with the SME or subject matter expert, go back and forth, back and forth and then try to make it so that um, it starts off very detailed but then try to make it as short as possible. The goal is to try to make an SOP no more than two pages. If it has to do, if it has to be extended, then I recommend breaking it down into different SOPs. Like, you know, how to make a peanut butter and sandwich part one, then part two, part three, part four, if it starts to get um, uh, complicated, okay? But remember, this is a very important document. If it's written correctly, it actually it actually serves your company um, in a manner that it guarantees success. Okay. Well, anyway, Kaizen Sensei talking a lot. Hope you like what you see. Okay. And if you do, comment, share, like, and I will be coming back to talk to you more about some of the various actual detailed parts of an SOP that you need to be um, aware of. Okay, thank you for watching.